Hey guys, it's Gary again, and I have an update on what's going on with Lime Tree growing in Michigan in my greenhouse. And um, if you don't know what this project's all about, you might want to review some of the previous videos. But uh, as you can see, I have a bit of a problem. The tree is losing leaves. And uh, I would say that this tree has lost maybe 35, close to 40% of the leaves. It's not in a critical stage right now, but this is something that I want to find out what it is and nip it in the bud, if you will, uh, before I start to have some serious problems. Because the leaves are the food factor of the plant, and if you don't have those, uh, then the plant starts to draw on its stored sugars in other parts of the plant, like the roots and stems. And once that's gone, the plant will die, the experiment's over. So, what are the possible causes uh, for the reason for these leaves dropping? One, one could be low light loading. Another could be lack of moisture, in other words, drought. Also, uh, low temperatures experienced in the greenhouse. Uh, another possibility is nutrients, but that's really not very likely. And then combustible gases coming off of my heat. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is light. The light levels in here are good, so it's not likely that this is the, the, the problem. Now, it is true that a lot of plants will lose their leaves when they are growing outside during the summer and then they're moved inside during the winter months. For instance, if you've ever grown a tropical hibiscus and it's been outside all summer in direct sunlight, doing really well, they take it inside, and then within a few weeks it just drops most of its leaves. Or you might have that problem with rubber plants or fiddle leaf fig. Uh, these are plants that don't tolerate a ch big change in light level. Now, this tree has been outside. Light levels are lower during the winter months. And we'll talk about that in another video, but uh, not enough to cause this particular problem. Another thing it might be is lack of moisture. Now, if you saw the original video, I planted this in essentially a box that's made out of like a styrofoam material. So water can't move sideways from capillary action in the soil. And the box was put in the ground so that it would not get the root, roots would not get the bulb. As a matter of fact, the roots around this tree right now are um, 60 degrees. So this tree is quite happy. If you were to go outside and look at the soil temperature, which I do have a thermometer out there right now, it's in the area. So it's doing just fine. Uh, now, as far as water is concerned, that box does prevent moisture from moving through the soil, but I've been watering it and uh, it's doing fine. As a matter of fact, when you want to get citrus to bloom, you actually cut down on some of the water so that you stress the tree slightly. But another thing that would tell us if it was moisture, a lot of times when plants are really suffering from lack of moisture, they'll start to turn brown around the edges of the leaves and uh, then you'll start to get some leaf drop. So we're not seeing that, so I don't think that's a problem. Another possibility is low temperature. Now, our temperatures here are set to be around 50 degrees and they have not gone down a lot except a couple of times. A few days ago the power went out and I had no blower to uh, blow the air or uh, pull the air out of the ground from the geothermal and it got down to about 33 degrees. Started my generator up, got things going again and it wasn't at 33 degrees more than probably about 15, 20 minutes. So uh, we got that going pretty quickly. I did have a time when the fuel ran out and I checked it was around 32 degrees and uh, these plants are well able to handle that temperature. You don't have damage on citrus until you start getting in the 20s and teens and you don't have problems with the avocados which are in the greenhouse also until um, you start getting in the 20s also. So the other thing is I have um, pineapples here and they can tolerate 32 degrees for a short period of time and they're doing all right. They don't show any great damage from the tree. So we can uh, rule that out. Another thing we talked about was nutrients. Uh, the soil here is very rich. I grow uh, fruit trees in this soil. I grow vegetables in the soil. So I know that that's not a problem. Now I haven't run a soil test to find out what the optimal nutrients are, but that's coming in the video. So then what's the other thing that we're doing out there? One is combustible gases coming off the heater. And um, remember, my heater is a kerosene heater and it's an unvented heater. It's designed to use in garages and places like that. It's not intended to use in an enclosed space, but I had to have something quickly. And one of the reasons why I have a carbon monoxide detector in this greenhouse 
is one of the gases it gives off is carbon monoxide, and you don't want to have that build up the greenhouse. Um, and the other thing is a greenhouse should be tight so that you're not losing heat, so you're actually working against yourself in terms of safety when you have a real tight greenhouse. Um, I have, the detector has not gone off except a couple of times where I put it down near the floor, but it's not a problem now because the heat is not running and there's enough air circulation here that I would not have a problem. We also have carbon dioxide given off, which is not a problem for the plant. Also, uh, formaldehyde, which can be a byproduct, nitrogen oxide, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide. These are all called volatile organic compounds. And they are given off, especially if you don't have sufficient oxygen in, in the greenhouse, because when the oxygen is lower, you do not get complete combustion, and that increases the pollution level in the greenhouse. One other little byproduct that I get is water. For every gallon of kerosene that you burn, you get about 1.1 gallons of water. And if you look up here where I have this plastic, which is designed to keep the heat low in the greenhouse, so that I don't keep space where they're not, there aren't any plants. Uh, water tends to collect on this plastic, and then I come through and cut it, a little hole in it with uh, scissors, and it drops down to the floor. But that doesn't really cause any problems. The reason that sulfur dioxide is created as an off-gas is because there's sulfur just about all of our uh, hydrocarbon fuel. And that sulfur mixes with oxygen and it causes the production of sulfur dioxide. And this sulfur dioxide will enter the plant through the stomach, which are little pores on the leaves. And as a result of that mixing with water, guess what's produced? Sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is not something that you want on plants or even on your own skin. Uh, what it will cause on plants is leaf burn, it will cause uh, flecking, and a general chlorosis, which is what you see up at the top here. It's very yellow uh, leaves here, and also it causes misshapen leaves, which I'm beginning to see here too. And if you want to put some indicator plants in your greenhouse to find out if that's the problem, although these symptoms are pretty much telling you that, then you can grow some petunias and tomatoes, or just bring them in. And in as little as one hour, they will start to show a uh, symptom. And uh, that pretty much tells you that you're wrong. Also, ethylene gas is produced. And ethylene gas for my pineapples, it will cause them to produce a flower if they're old enough. Usually they have to be at least two or three years old. But it is uh, a problem for other plants in the fact that uh, it will cause leaf drop or symptoms I should say, at as little as 0 0.01 parts per million. And this not only comes from the fuel being burned, but as the leaves drop and they rot, they also give off ethylene. So you'll also get malformed leaves and flowers, you'll get stunted growth, buds that are growing on the plant will start to add size, in other words, they will fall. And if you have flowers, they'll start to uh, senesce more, they will break down faster than they usually would. And the, the highest levels of the ethylene will be closest to your heater source, and then it's diluted by air as it circulates around the greenhouse. Now, if you have a heater, you want to be sure that it's uh, maintained properly and you install it properly. As I said before, the heater that I have uh, wasn't intended for greenhouse use, but I was running out of time. So the question that I need to ask is, what am I going to do about this? Well, I'm going to have to buy another heating source, and it's on order right now. I chose a uh, Modine uh, greenhouse heater. Uh, it will kick out about 75,000 uh, BTUs. Um, or is it 48? I have to look on that, and I'll put a little note on the screen. And uh, that'll be enough to um, take care of the heating needs in here in conjunction with the geothermal. And um, the other thing that I wanted to say is that this is a propane heater, so I have to have tanks and everything, and it will have to be installed by somebody that's certified for installing propane heaters. So that's going to cost me some money. I figure it's going to be about $1,000. Uh, yeah, this is almost like a government project. The price just keeps going up. Anyway, uh, that's what's happening right now, and I hope this helps you to be able to step-by-step -step diagnose some of the problems you might be having on your plants, and we'll be back another video. Have a nice day.